We're back here uh, watching football for the first time, or doing an overtime for football for the first time in, uh, in many, many months. Yeah, you're used to seeing us uh, with the backdrop as Assembly Hall or, um, or even as, you know, the United Center or wherever. But today it's Memorial Stadium. Uh, John's sitting right where John Bonnerfine in Atlanta, Indiana, sitting right where Don Fisher was sitting for the game. And uh, we're sitting here, obviously, in the radio booth Chompy, after watching. Chompy chair. It's not, a, it's not bad. Swivel. Uh, you get some. You know, you can adjust the, the heights of things. I can't see mine. Uh, well, go down. well, I guess Don Fisher's chair is just. I mean, he's he's been here for years. It's probably yeah. in the same setting that it always is. Anyway, we uh, we all just watched fin finished watching uh, Indiana's cream and crimson game, which was kind of more of a practice, as, as Kevin Wilson was mm -hmm. advertising it. It, was, it had drills. It had in-game situations. Fans came down and were able to call plays, which was kind of fun. Uh, and it ended in a tie here, but then officially it was changed to 13-10 to 10 in the Crimson team's victory. So uh, all of you Crimson fans out there, good job getting the win. Uh, but Sorry, Crimson fans. Yeah, Cream, maybe better luck next year. Um, tons to, to kind of think about and talk about. Um, you looked more of the offense, I looked more of mm -hmm. the defense. Uh, what were some things that stood out to you uh, on the offense side of the ball? Yeah, um, well, just back to the ending of the game. Uh, so Xander Diemann threw a, a touchdown pass to Damian Graham with, what, like four seconds yeah. left? And so yeah. that put him up 13-10. to 10. And then the, the fans are called for a 15-yard uh, unintentional or yeah, something. Yeah, just like disorderly un unsportsmanlike. Kind of, unsportsmanlike kind of disorderly conduct. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't that, that rowdy, I don't think. No. I, yeah, I don't know if they were really but, rowdy at all. But, but yeah, so uh, actually... Uh, Decent ending to the game. It was fairly interesting. It was very interesting. Yeah, it was not your usual uh, yeah. spring game ending. Yeah. But yeah, um, so I talked about the offense in my article, and I did mention the defense because, as a whole, they only let up uh, 23 points, 24, and yeah. you would have counted the extra point, but only three touchdowns. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the defense was really good. I mean, they sacked the offense 10 times. I don't want to mm -hmm. talk too much about them, but Nate Sudfeld, uh, probably the biggest storyline. Into today and as we move into the season and probably throughout the next season, 17 of 24 for 187 yards with one touchdown and one interception. Although he should have had two touchdowns, probably, he threw yeah. a touchdown pass in the back end, end zone. Simi Cobbs that was really incomplete, although upon a video review it showed that Simi's foot was in. But Sunfeld looked looked pretty good. He looked really good. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, and so did Xander Diemann. Uh, in the first half, he started off. Uh, not too hot, just bouncing a lot of balls, skipping one, hopping them to his receivers. Uh, and then he settled down in the second half, ended up 8 of 16 uh, for over 100 yards passing uh, with two touchdowns. Um, so, yeah, the, the quarterback played good, and you want to talk about the defense? Sure, yeah, I mean, you touched on it, obviously. Uh, Mike Miller of the Herald Times is uh, sneaking into that. And there he is. Hey, there Mike. Is. Hi, Mike. Um, yeah, I, you mentioned the 10 sacks. Uh, that was something that really stood out to me. The quarterbacks ran the ball, had 14 rushing attempts today, um, which is not what Indiana really wants mm -hmm. them to be doing. Uh, even though Xander you know, Diamond's a little bit more of a shifty guy or whatever, um, it's more, of, I guess, of an aspect of his game than it is of, of Nate Sudfeld or Danny Cameron's. But um, quarterbacks were, were on the move a lot. They were uncomfortable a lot, it seemed like, uh, in today's spring game. Uh, just kind of as a combination of uh, guys being covered well downfield, and it, I mean, any you know, the usual reason why quarterbacks are under pressure is you know, um, pass rushing combination with with good coverage, uh, and that's what it was. Um, yeah, I thought the, the corners played fairly well today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, especially considering that considering that none of them have started a game. Uh, you know, Tim Bennett, and Michael Hunter started all the games I think last year, and uh, Richard Fant, Noel Padmore, Ben Bach, um, some of those younger guys um, who I think we have. Kind of high expectations for, uh, especially with Fant. Um, they played well. Uh, the ball hardly got thrown Fant's way. I think he only had two tackles today, um, just because he wasn't really tested too much. Uh, but they were they were playing well. They were playing aggressively. Um, really, really physical. I think I'll, you know if there's going to be a highlight reel of this game, I think a lot of it's going to be on the defensive end. There are a lot of hard hits. Mm -hmm. um, Dawson Fletcher absolutely killed uh, Simi Cobbs when he was hung up kind of hung out to drive as a, a soft throw from Xander Diamond. And then the probably the biggest hit, or the, the, more, the most uh, productive hit of the game, um, was on Mitchell Page. Um, who, who hit him? I don't even remember. Um, I forget. It they was, uh, he did, he fumbled hard. Um, it was Keontae Walton, uh, safety Keontae Walton. Um, came up and 
just absolutely rammed uh, Little Mitchell Page. He had a really good game. Um, I love the team catches in yards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he played really well. Um, he had a, a couple of really long receptions, but he he got absolutely um, speared on that play, and, and the ball popped out, uh, and Dawson Fletcher actually recovered that. Um, Clyde Newton and Robert McCray uh, both had two sacks. Um, there was just there's a lot going on on the defensive side of the ball today, and they just they're playing with this spring. I guess one of the storylines is that just them playing with more confidence and them playing, having another year of experience under their belt. Obviously, it was a very young defense the past. Well, actually, like all of Wilson's tenure, uh, it's been a pretty young defense, and they've uh, they've progressed another year. They've physically matured another year. They're bigger, they're faster, stronger, all that stuff, and they just have they play a lot faster. You know, last last spring was the first spring where they were. Um, using a 3-4 defense, and they're still maybe feeling it out a little bit. This year, it didn't look like they were testing anything out or feeling anything out or uncomfortable at all. They were, they were flying around. They were moving as quickly as, as an, IU, an IU defense has uh, any time I've covered them. So uh, I think, you know, like you said, they're, they're plenty to talk about on the offensive side of the ball, but I thought the story of the day um, was more on, on defense. Me too, and like you mentioned, uh, the defense is playing with a lot more confidence, and that comes through experience. I've played a lot. I think the offense is still kind of trying to figure itself yeah. out and each other out. Obviously, Nate Sudfeld's back as a senior, but he didn't play a whole lot last year because he got injured. The offensive line is mostly intact from last season. Yeah. There's still a few uh, new parts, but the skill positions outside of the tight ends who uh, only caught three passes total today. Anthony Kassar got injured, um, Jordan Peaks only had one catch for five yards. But the wide receivers, I mean, had shown a lot of potential and they've had a pretty good spring camp. But them, as well as the running backs, um, the, the young guys, are they're just not as experienced. I mean, Ricky Jones is a redshirt junior, but he's been injured throughout right. his whole time at IU. So this is really his first playing time. I mean, the most, the most senior guy really outside of Jones is Jason Harris. Yeah, which is uh, and, and he's a sophomore. concerning. Yeah. yeah. So, I think as they as they get used to each other more and they work on the tempo, it'll get better. Um, but yeah, I mean the defense. I think you could clearly say that they won the battle yeah. today. Yeah, plenty of optimism, you know, as there always is in, in spring football. But uh, we're gonna get out of here because it's uh, just about time to go. Uh, we're gonna enjoy the rest of our weekend, which hopefully you will do as well. Uh, we'll have plenty more coverage reflecting on the spring game and kind of moving forward. Uh, there's still another week of practice. There's an open scrimmage next Thursday. It's Thursday of. Full 500 week. Uh, we'll be there and we'll be uh, reporting throughout the week. So uh, stick with us and uh, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.